thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, how amazing is it for you being here at this German convention because it's uh, one of the biggest in Europe and seeing all this crowd crying and applauding just for you? Yeah, it's really thrilling. And, and I've noticed that um, when I've met fans in the past, there's been quite a few German fans of Sher Sherlock, the show that I'm in. And so I was particularly excited to come because um, it's always lovely meeting the German fans. There's loads of them. For some reason, uh, Sherlock Holmes is a big success here in Germany, so it's really thrilling to come. Of course it is, and the people love the show. So um, what kind of feeling is it being a part of this successful franchise? Um, well, it's, it's a good feeling. It's very nice to be in something that people like. And, uh, yeah, and that, that people from so many different countries like us. That's never happened to me before. And uh, so it's quite thrilling to... I don't know, to get letters from all over the world all the time. That's a nice feeling. And sometimes I'm on Twitter and sometimes... I remember once a few years ago I was asking everyone what their sky looked like because I, I had a particularly good sky in London and suddenly there were skies from, I don't know, from the Philippines, from Russia, from Australia. People were sending me photographs and it was sort of magic, really. So this show sort of bringing together all these people from all around the world. It's a, it's a lovely feeling. Do you remember a very nice German fan mail or fan letter? Oh gosh, I get I get so. Do you know most of them are actually from China? Most of my fan mail is from China. It's very I don't know what that is, but something about either the show or the character of Molly speaks very loudly <laughs> to the young <laughs> Chinese fans. Um, yeah, I do get lovely letters from Germany, but I've gone blank in that way that when you get put on the spot, you can't think of a single one. But I promise I have had some. Are you allowed in private too? Because you're looking very, very, very uh, shy. Do Are you allowed in private life too? Am I l loud? Is this kind of loud character? Oh or yes, I, I, I'm only, I'm, I'm pretending to be shy now. Really, I'm uh, what we call in English a gobshite. <laughs> I'm very loud. I mean, it depends. If if I'm with my friends, I'm, I'm. Um, yeah, I don't. I never shut up. <laughs> but here, I'm a bit. Yeah, bright lights, camera lenses, okay. they're, they're scary. And uh, I love these behind the scenes stories. Do you have maybe one crazy story from us on the set? Maybe maybe something go wrong that should not go wrong or some other funny things happen? Oh yes, you see, I'm a journalist too and, and uh, at least I was for a long time. I used to interview f actors and directors and so I'm now familiar with how blank you go when you're asked this particular question. And I really should have like a list of them. I should make a note when we're filming and go, oh, that's a good story to tell. Because I can never think of any. Um, well, not really, but I had my birthday on set once. And so I had Benedict ask me what my favourite cake was, which is an egg custard tart. So I had lunch with him in his trailer and he'd got them to get an egg custard tart with a candle in it, which was very sweet. But I don't know if there's no sort of racy, exciting stories. Um, it's a human story. It's it also is a cool. very human story. But do you remember maybe some things that, that, that happen behind the shootings? Maybe maybe something explode or go wrong? Or no, I, can, I mean, that happens all the time on, on other sets. But I'm, I'm afraid I don't remember. A, I don't remember. I don't remember any. Remember, no, I can't remember anything particularly thrilling. Benedict bouncing up and down on his wire outside. Bart's hospital was quite fun, but nothing went wrong, luckily. He was just going up and down, bouncy, bouncy. <laughs> okay, and last question for me. Maybe uh, you can give us some teasers, some tidbits for the fourth season. Do you have maybe some things that you can uh, tell us that you know? Because it will be airing in, um, I think, uh, two months from now. Oh, so you haven't had number four no, yet? No, number four just starting in uh, about eight weeks. Oh, I see. How so thrilling. Some, some oh, gosh, I was giving massive spoilers all, all this morning in my, in my conference. Oh. I was telling everyone, oh, dear, I completely forgotten that you hadn't seen it yet. Okay. Oh, gosh. You, you, we don't see it on the official program. I don't no. know where no. all the products No, no hopefully. It's not really exactly. It's all over the internet. Um, well, I mean, I think the official line on that season is that it's, it's dark. It's very dark, 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 dark. Very dark. You can still see what's going on, but only just... It's, um, gosh, it's really hard to, to remember what you can, can't say. Uh, 
I think the, the thing that everyone's been saying is that it might be the end, it might not, we don't know. So there's, that, there's a sense of it coming together, I think, in the final episode. There's a sense of a sort of end or beginning, whatever. Sometimes that's the same thing, isn't it? Um, she said <laughs> elliptically. Yes. Um, gosh. Oh God, I'm hopeless at this, Parvis. I'm sorry. No, I don't have anything <laughs> sensible to say. I'm, uh, the camera starts and I go... <laughs> <laughs> In England, there's this show, The Creature Comforts. It's yeah. the, this guy called Nick Park, and all the animals like that. Like, you know, talk like that. And that's how I always feel I go when I have a camera on me, and I'm not playing a part. I get really, hi, I'm really <laughs> stiff and shy. Hi, I do. You're a great singer, so much.